The Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open saw a first time champion in Jake Peters. See another one in tournament leader Chris Loschetter. The PBA Wolf Open comes up now. has been one of America's top bowling cities. Minutes from downtown is AMF Bolero Lanes. Today, the site of the PBA Wolf Open, all part of the Geico Summer Swing. Here's a look at our stepladder bracket. We have two legends, Hall of Famers, Pete Weber and Norm Duke, with 74 PBA titles between them, along with former PBA Rookie of the Year, Bill O'Neill, 20-year-old EJ Tackett, our top seed, Chris Loschetter, seeking their first ever PBA title. My Hall of Fame broadcast partner, together again after all these years, is Randy Peterson, joined by the five seed, Bill O'Neill and Pete Weber. And thanks, Dave. What a great opening match we have with these two great players out on this tour. And, Bill, I'll start with you. Uh, you're trying to become just the third player this season to win multiple titles, but you have to climb the ladder, and you have to take on this guy in the opening match. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, I have four titles, and two of them came from, from the bottom, and I climbed the ladder to do that. And, um, you know, it's always an honor to bowl Pete. You know, he's a, a legend of the game, and, uh, you know, it just means that much more if I can go out and beat him. What do you have to do to, to knock this guy out first and then climb the ladder and win this title? i got to get off to a strong start just for myself. It's, you know, it's not really about, you know, what Pete does out there. It's just about me. Good luck. Thanks for your time. Pete, earlier this season you collected your 10th career major, winning the Tournament of Champions in dramatic fashion. What was that like for you? Uh, it was awesome, Randy. Uh, couldn't ask for a, a better way or a better Easter day, actually. So uh, it was a thrill. It was an honor, and uh, it ranks up there. And like Bill O'Neill, you're trying to win your second uh, title of the season, and that would probably put you right at the top of the list for the Player of the Year race, an award you have not won. Have, has that weighed at all on your mind? Oh yeah, it's it's weighed on my mind since 1987 when I thought I should have won. But uh, you know, it, it's just something that I got to put aside and do. Stay focused on what I need to do to win this this tournament here. Pete, good luck. Thanks. It's the only thing the great PW has not done. 32 feet. Wolf replaces Cheetah as the shortest oil pattern, the PBA lane pattern library, the short oil design, placing an emphasis on attacking the pattern correctly from the very beginning with the intent of stretching the pattern down the lane. We have high scoring potential today. The number five seed is four PBA tour titles, including one major from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, the real deal, Bill O'Neill. Just outside Philadelphia, Bill O'Neill. Bidding for his fifth career title. Great start. 19 and 16 career TV record for Bill O'Neill, about a 219 average. The shades look good with the hairdo. The number four player owns 37 PBA Tour titles, including 10 majors. From St. Anne, Missouri, PBA Hall of Famer Pete Weber. PDW is here with the signature sunglasses. And yes, if you're wondering, that is Terrell Owens in the background, owner of the Dallas Strikers. And that's uh, Pete showing off a new deal. I asked him, uh, who's, your, who's your stylist? He said, number ones. We will speak with NFL superstar Terrell Owens on our broadcast today. Can't wait. Did you get the number one reference? The yes. number one clipper, hair clipper? <laughs> well, let's take a look at Pete Weber's ball reaction now. This is a 32-foot oil pattern, so there's more friction out here than you would find at a family reunion. You can see that ball go all the way out to the outside part of the lane and then just rip back. Using an IQ Tour Edition. Medium hook potential. And that great soft touch and rotation of Pete Weber's at the bottom of the swing. Whoa! 
channel. Lost it. Uh, well, we didn't see a whole lot of that on the Wolf oil pattern nice because there is so much friction to the right. And this one looks like Pete just kind of nice loses it off his that. hand. The good news is he's working on a strike so he doesn't lose pin count if he's able to come back and make the spare. Make the spare. Six. No. Much better. And that's the normal compensation when you miss too far right. Pete got it inside and pulled that's it and went through good the face. At all. The only bright spot <laughs> is that it came very early in the match, and there is time to recover, but already an 18 pin hole there for the legend. 50 years old. 33rd year on to it. Messenger takes out number 10. Yeah, that was a massive messenger. Take a look at the great form of Bill O'Neill. He's a great athlete. He's in the gym. You can see that high back swing there. This is a great position to be in with this leg knee, the knee bend there, and that open shoulder at the foul line. Now watch the head pin come across and just look like it was shot out of a cannon right into the 10 pin. Really high 4 7 shot. That's bad. That's bad. Well, just a bad shot from Bill O'Neill. Got it inside of target. And one thing you can't do on a short oil pattern is pull it because there's just not enough oil to hold the ball in line. No surprise to me, though, Dave, that Bill O'Neill did so well on this short oil pattern. Remember, he won the Cheetah, which prior to the Wolf oil pattern was the shortest pattern we used. 30 35 feet. That was in Las Vegas, his only prior TV appearance of the season before now. Throw the ball, please. Yeah. Weber, Pete's wife there. She is. Pete's right. I was side by side with the legend for so many of his big moments. They're expecting two grandkids in the fall. That's a nice adjustment. Perfect. Shot into the pocket. Well, Tracy yeah. told us before the match, he still loves it. TV day, nothing quite like the show. She goes through all the drama Pete does. This is just a beautiful shot here. Look at how quick that ball's out of his hand and peels off about the, the three board back into the pocket perfectly. Now, let's see what he does here on the left lane. Some PDW on show day. Nothing like it. Not used to seeing him with uh, with the short hair like that. I like the look actually. A little follically challenged. <laughs> Just used to seeing the that uh, side part going over there and and the sunglasses. He looks a little more like like a Terminator now with the with the glasses and the short hair. O'Neill bidding for his fifth career title. He told us yesterday, pretty good. Been on TV enough now. No more text messages or phone calls from back home to congratulate him like there used to be when he first made a lot of shows. That great rookie season he had. 0506 PBA Rookie of the Year. His arsenal, Randy. What do you see here? Arson low flares, a, a ball that uh, that doesn't cover a lot of ground that he can keep in front of him. He's going to use that because of the high friction. Much more controllable. Number 10 goes down late. 
This is going to be a common theme throughout this telecast. There's going to be a lot of strikes thrown. It was a high scoring event. Peels that ball out. Likes that 10 getting kicked late. Right now, commanding the lead for Bill O'Neill. Pete looks for the turkey here. A double going for Bill. All right, so as Pete has been perfect on the right lane, let's take a look at his two shots on the left lane. Remember this one? That was in the second frame, goes right in the gutter. Pete came back in the fourth frame, though, and made a beautiful shot here. Kicks the 10 out. Pete Weber working on three in a row. For Pete Weber, who told us yesterday he's going to keep on competing among the world's best while he feels he can win, which he does. 37 career titles already for the Hall of Famer. Will this be number 38 today in Milwaukee? He's taking on Bill O'Neill. Great match so far. Welcome back to AMF Bolero Lanes in Milwaukee. So far in the Geico Summer Swing, we've seen the Badger Oil pattern at 52 feet, now the Wolf at 32 feet. Randy breaks it down with an on-lane demo. Well, I had an opportunity to both bowl on both oil patterns. This is my attempt at striking on the wolf. You can see just how much friction there is. Look at how this ball just bounces from the outside part of the lane. So when I went over to Badger, I stood and looked at the exact same target. And that was the result. And that shows you just how different and how extreme the two oil patterns are. Good to see that PBA 50 Tour winning form, at least on the first shot. I, st I, still, I still got a you little left in the it. tank, buddy. You still got it. Plenty left. Six frame for Bill O'Neill. Up by six. Could be 16. Works for the channel. Messenger. Yes, sir. Down she goes. Not what you want to see if it's Pete Weber. But Bill O'Neill loves this. Look at this ball. That's about the one and a half board. Right. And needless to say, a nice break for Bill O'Neill. Come on. A better than that. He will take it. He was almost ashamed. Madly. Looks for the four bagger, seven frame. 16 pin match right now. Shot. Go! Oh, again! Cross deck scout. Bill O'Neill just throwing some serious wood. How about another messenger? Watch the head pin, sidewall, and just comes off of that left sidewall like it just got catapulted into the 10. But remember who this guy is. That's PDW. Living legend. Looks for a five-bagger. To pull to within 16. Which he does. Perfect. Whoa. 7-9, we're standing late. That ball was so high flush. Can I have a re-rack, please? Season average leaders. Jason Belmonte, Player of the Year candidate, former Player of the Year West Milan, last year's top player on the PBA Tour, Sean Rash, along with Pete and Bill competing here today in Milwaukee. And I got to tell you, those averages are extremely high. Watch how high flush this ball is. Nine gets tripped, seven gets taken out by the bowling ball practically. Pete Weber can cut the deficit to six. He's got to keep striking. Max score for Weber, 262. O'Neill can shoot, 278. Oh. 
Four pin. Come on. And I know it's only the eighth frame, but that might be all she wrote for Weber. He knows it, too. He, I guarantee his only thought was, I have to continue to strike to have a chance to win this game. He oh, needs help. Out. He needs help from O'Neal now. The first, first spare shot I threw with that ball, I figured it was going to kind of like hook. Pete doesn't shoot a lot of spares. Shot. Doesn't need to. No. 1998 PBA Hall of Fame inductee. This guy doesn't shoot a lot of spares either. Bill O'Neill can throw a lot of strikes. He can strike out here with the best of them. Came to within a game of winning player of the year honors just a few years ago. 10 pin stand for Bill. That's pretty good. Ah, that was pretty good. Well, it's scary when your good shot goes flat 10 and Bill will have to make a little adjustment on that right lane to try to get the ball to finish a little deeper into the pocket. Weber can still shoot 241. O'Neill right now at 237 if he spares here. Picks it up with a 10 pin. Go in here. Come on. Go in here. Still 16 pin deficit for Pete Weber. Pin stands for Bill. It's the third all time meeting between these two. On TV, good. it's 1 1 so far. Well, now it's a plethora of 10 pins for Bill O'Neill. He needs a double in the 10th to lock out Pete Weber. A double in good count, no matter what Pete does. But he's still in the 230s right now. Weber can get to the 240s. Right now, PDW thinking about that four pin he just left in the eighth frame, going, man, if I could have just run it a little better. Could be a different story. 10 pin again. Pete's only chance, Dave, is to strike out. Pete. Pete, Bill O'Neill, 214-202. Match two, 2010. Won a day. Dick Weber opened in Fountain Valley near LA. Lost to Bill, 257-224. In 09, Motor City Open in Detroit. Come on, a lot of head-to-head -head experience. Foundation frame, big strike. Sets up the 10th frame for him. We've seen crazier things happen. Weber must strike out to put all the pressure on Bill O'Neill. Weber doubles here in the 10th frame, O'Neill has to double in the 10th frame. Yeah, that could be interesting. Oh. Seven. Probably the best hit of the day. Hard really? to believe that didn't strike. Four pin light. Pete gives us a little extra. Really gets that ball to motor down the lane, and he comes in late, leaving the shaker seven. High percentage hit. That was a really good hit on the other side. Nine times out of ten, that would have probably struck. On this oil pattern. There's that perfect shot he's looking for. 128 career TV appearance. One bad frame cost you. That was a big bad frame, too. O'Neill needs eight on the first ball, and it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. 
DJ Tackett, only 20 years old, looking for his first title, is the three seed in this event. Seven. Double wood, 10, two, eight, 10. Well, he needs to make the two, eight to win by one. He looks flummoxed, Randy. Well, remember last time we threw a really good shot on this lane and left the week 10, comes back with another shot that looks pretty good. Pete's like, figures, I carry that hit. He leaves that, it's over. O'Neill needs to cover two out of the three. Which he does. Wins by one. And wins by one. Well, we talked about it, we called it. It always comes down to the 10th frame in times like this. Pete Weber just didn't carry that light hit. Bill O'Neill's going to move on. 2.22 to 2.21. And E.J. Tackett from Huntington, Indiana. Only 20 years old awaits Bill O'Neill in the next match. Bill O'Neill in his third head-to-head -head matchup on TV with the legendary Hall of Famer Pete Weber. Takes PDW down. O'Neill advances. Pete's day is done.